course it's a housing issue. People don't choose to live in their cars because they have better options. Escondido considering a tough on crime approach to homelessness today, but not everyone is in favor of it. Plus, local officials reject a proposal to temporarily close the border. What they're doing instead. Flood victims have more time to file taxes. I smelled something uh, burning, like sort of like burnt wire or something like that. What was that burning smell around San Diego? We're working for you to find out. It's 6 a.m. on Wednesday, February 28th, and you're up with CBS 8. And thank you so much for joining us here at 6 a.m. Everyone on this Wednesday, I'm Eric Connor and I'm Netta Iran. Port. We do want to start off with a check of your forecast. I think you're going to like what today will bring us pretty gorgeous conditions. Here's our live look from the airport of the bay. So nice. We do have some clouds hanging out with us today, but expect more sunshine this afternoon. Really calm in San Diego, but way up north that storm. Hoo -hoo. We are going to watch that one. Let you know what that will do for us by the weekend for now 57 degrees if you are downtown and then taking a look at your forecast highs for today mid 60s at the coast 70 degrees yes sunny and 70 for inland 62 at the mountains 78 in the deserts turning now to our top story here later on this afternoon the Escondido City Council will take up a new proposed policy that addresses the homeless crisis yeah the city of Escondido is eyeing a new tough on crime approach they're calling it CBSA's Regina Yarita live outside Escondido City Hall now where a meeting on this new proposal is going to take place there Regina yeah, good morning, guys, and it's still unclear what type of strategies will be implemented to handle a policy like this one. What we do know is that they're moving away or trying to move away from a housing first approach that we've seen in past years and focus more on a public safety first approach that brings tougher consequences to homeless people breaking the law. Now, homeless advocates, they have some questions and concerns. Take a listen. So you really need to work collaboratively with the other communities so that you can overall try and really address the problem. Pushing it into another area doesn't help. And so you can see not everyone is in favor of it. There's actually concern and lots of questions on how this approach would work. So a forum organized by Interfaith Community Services was hosted yesterday. This is a nonprofit that helped find permanent housing for more than 1400 people last year. They discussed some of the issues they had about this proposal. Some people even saying this type of policy won't make much of a difference, especially if it doesn't have a focus on providing unsheltered people a permanent or temporary home. Now, last year's point in time count found more than 300 hundred unsheltered people living in Escondido and that makes it the largest homeless population of all North County cities. So back out here um, we know that the mayor as well as council member Joe Garcia have drafted this uh, policy and they will introduce it today. That meeting starts at 4 p.m. That's latest outside of City Hall in Escondido. I'm Regina Yurita for CBS 8. The city of San Diego just received the largest grant from the state to tackle homelessness. Through the state's Homeless Housing Assistance and Prevention Program, the City of San Diego was awarded about $30 million in funding. The city plans to use about $4.5 million towards prevention and shelter diversion, $17.4 million of the funding to interim housing, and $3 million for street outreach. Another $3 million will be used for interim housing for youth. And in just a few hours here, former Chula Vista City Councilwoman Andrea Cardenas is set to appear in court again. She's accused of defrauding the state out of unemployment insurance during the pandemic. We've been covering this story here and she'll be in court today. CBS 8's Chris Grove joining us live with what we can expect. Hi, Chris. Hey, good morning. And last week we were here for the last readiness conference. It started about two hours late because both sides were in negotiations to try to settle this, to try to come to some sort of deal here that wasn't reached. So maybe that's something that happens today. We'll have to see. But in the meantime, what's happening in Chula Vista is they are trying to find a replacement for that district four seat. Now that Cardenas has officially resigned, her seat has been declared vacant. And we heard from residents just two days ago about the process. Take a listen. I would prefer that the seat stays vacant. It is disconcerting for us to have only three or four people, none of who live in the district, electing someone to represent us when all we can do is watch from the sidelines. 
So here's how this works. The council has until April 11th to fill the seat or will remain empty until voters decide in November. Any person selected would only be appointed and would be temporary. Cardenas resigned last week amid her legal trouble. She is facing those charges of conspiracy to commit fraud, money laundering and failing to file tax returns. It's alleged that she and her brother Jesus lied on their application to the federal government's Paycheck Protection Program to get $176,000 in taxpayer dollars during the pandemic and then used part of that money to help pay off Andrea's campaign debt. Now, as for today's readiness hearing, that will begin at 815. But of course, if any developments come out of that, we'll be sure to update you both here and on CBS8.com. Eric Canetta. Chris Crow, thank you for that. And today, County Supervisor Joel Anderson says his staff will meet with White House officials to discuss the border situation. This comes after the Board of Supervisors discussed Anderson's proposal to temporarily close the border until there's a solution. He says his district can't handle any more releases of migrants. Instead, the Board of Supervisors decided to send a letter to congressional leaders asking them to work with the president on bipartisan immigration legislation. The Board of Supervisors also moving forward with plans for the development of a long term migrant transfer site. This allows for the county to look for grants and other funding for a migrant shelter. This all comes after a migrant welcome center closed last week due to funding. The center's closure caused hundreds of migrants to be dropped off at our transit centers. The IRS says it's extending the federal tax deadline for families affected by last month's flooding. The state controller made a similar announcement about state taxes. If you were impacted by the floods, you may have until June 17th now to file your returns. The relief is applied to anyone with an IRS ad address on record in the disaster area. Hey, we put a link to the IRS website on the help button for you at CBS8.com. This morning, we still don't know what caused that burning smell many of you reported yesterday. People described it as a burning chemical smell or plastic smell. We checked in with San Diego Fire. The department received a few calls from around the city, but says hasn't been able to confirm where the smell was coming from or what it might be. We also asked the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District about the smell. They received several calls and they sent agents into the field, but haven't found a source. Their monitoring team says the air quality numbers haven't changed about seven o'clock and it just smelled kind of like it smelled like fire, but not like a forest fire, kind of like a metallic -y type of fire. We contacted the Navy, the Marines and asked if they have any knowledge of what the smell is and we're still waiting for a response from them. But yeah, many of you smelling that uh, that yep, distinct I smelled smell. it. I didn't smell it. So I, it was weird. It was like there was a fire maybe hours ago hmm. and then the material that burned. That Still was lingering. the smell that was hanging out. Today I don't smell it, but yesterday 3 a.m., 9 a.m. I smelt it across hmm. different neighborhoods even. A lot of people reporting it. So yeah, interesting. Hopefully there's an answer at some point because it's interesting how widespread it was. A uh, time right now is 6.07. This is our view from Del Mar. Of course, a little gray. We do have the cloud coverage hanging out with us right now, but we should see the sunshine this afternoon. So your weather headlines today, sunny near seasonal up Upper 60s for most of San Diego, but some of you might get to the low 70s. So enjoy a day with 70s and sunshine. Thursday and Friday, we will cool a bit. Onshore flow returns, so we might see more fog actually tomorrow morning with the marine layer coming in pretty thick Thursday, Friday as we await a big storm system to work its way to California. Now, what it's going to do for San Diego is nothing like what it's going to do up in the Pacific Northwest, the Bay Area, the Tahoe region. For us, we'll get rain, yes, wind as well. It will be cooler, 5 to 15 degrees cooler than average for the weekend. Taking a look right now, we do have some fog in Ramona with the clouds hanging out over you, half mile visibility. Overall, though, any kind of activity looks to be excuse me, way, way up here. <coughs> so this is where we're seeing that uh, rain and snow already coming through the Pacific Northwest and Canada and the Bay Area. We'll get that uh, later this morning into tonight. We won't see anything like that until Friday late night, early Saturday morning. 57 degrees right now for downtown San Diego, taking you over the next 12 hours here. And we're looking at temperatures in the upper 60s, so not bad. That's for downtown. By 10 a.m., the sun will be shining bright on places like Seaport Village near the airport. I mean, enjoy it. The weather station's right by the airport, and it's forecasting a 68 degree high there. 68 National City, 69 La Mesa, 73 in Santee and El Cajon. In the South Bay, look at Chula Vista, 68. Imperial Beach, 62 degrees. So these are slightly 
above average for inland valleys. 71, certainly not normal for this month of February. It is still winter, believe it or not. We have less than a month to go before we get to spring, actually. Coming soon, March 19th. So, yeah, enjoy this day with the sunshine. I think a lot of people will like it. Uh, this is the big system I was referring to, and we will time this out here coming up in just a few minutes uh, to let you know how much rain we can expect. But at least for the next three days, we will be dry. So now let's talk about traffic. So let me show you what's going on uh, with our roadways. When I last checked, it did look very clear. Looks like still clear. No major incidents to report on our freeways, and we're in the green, in fact. So everything's uh, looking pretty nice, smooth conditions. Oh, this was a live look, but we will move past that. Our drive times look like this this morning. If you're headed on the 5 South, Bound from the 54 to the border, it will only take you eight minutes. So yeah, get out now because uh, of course there's not that many cars out there with you. Although let's take a look at the border wait times. That usually shows different. The Customs and Border Protection website showing it takes 110 minutes to get through the general line coming from Mexico through the San Ysidro port of entry and then 80 minutes for the general line at the Otay Mesa port of entry. All right, still ahead here. Biden and Trump win Michigan. What they're focusing on now. Plus, the new bills targeting fentanyl and why some think they don't go far enough. And has all the rain made a difference for our snowpack? 